A startling assassination took place in the Roman Senate on March 15, 44 BC, when a group of senators conspired together to carry it out. Where are they aiming? Julius Caesar, without a doubt, he was the most powerful man in the Roman Republic. However, why would anyone seek to take the life of such a great individual? We need to travel further back in time and investigate Julius Caesar's life and reign in order to comprehend the sequence of events that culminated in Caesar's demise. Therefore, let's not waste any more time and get started right away. Julius Caesar was born in the year 100 BC in the Italian city of Sabura. His family held a significant position in society, although they were not exceptionally well off financially. Despite this, Caesar was able to climb the levels of Roman society due to the intelligence, competence, and charisma he possessed. Caesar was elected to the position of consul, which was the highest office in the Roman Republic when he was in his 30s. This was a testament to the fact that he had already established himself as a successful military commander by that point. However, he quickly came to the conclusion that the other senators placed restrictions on the scope of his power. Caesar took a daring step in the year 49 BC. He led his army across the river Rubicon, which is considered to be the beginning of the civil war against the Roman Republic. He prevailed over his opponents and was subsequently named dictator for life. Caesar instituted a variety of far-reaching changes around Rome while he was in power, which fundamentally altered the city. He instituted land reforms, which resulted in veterans of his troops and the destitute receiving land as a reward for their service. In addition, he was responsible for the reform of the calendar, which included the introduction of the Julian calendar, which served as the foundation for the calendar we use today. Julius Caesar was a major person in ancient Rome and was seen as one of the most powerful and influential men of his day. He ascended to power as a military commander and statesman, and through his leadership and conquests, he contributed to the development of the Roman Empire into a force that was powerful and preeminent. Caesar's victories on the battlefield particularly his conquest of Gaul, won him the devotion of his men and the admiration of the Roman people. He was able to utilize this popularity to his advantage in order to rise up the political ranks and ultimately become the dictator of Rome. He brought about considerable changes, one of which was the adoption of the Julian calendar, which is in some form or another still in use today. One of Julius Caesar's most important legacies is thought to be his impact on Roman politics, Rome was ruled as a republic when he took office, which meant that authority was distributed among a large number of elected officials. On the other hand, because power was first concentrated in the hands of one ruler during Caesar's reign, this period is seen as the start of the Roman Empire. Significant changes occurred for both Rome and the rest of the globe as a result of Rome's transformation from a republic to an empire. It enabled a higher level of political stability and a more efficient form of government both of which aided in the development and extension of the Roman Empire. On the other hand, it led to the concentration of power in the hands of a single leader, which, depending on the situation, may be viewed as a blessing or a burden. Caesar's authority and influence were not limited to the city of Rome alone because he was responsible for the expansion of the Roman Empire via both military and diplomatic means. Both his military expeditions in Egypt and North Africa as well as his intentions for a military war against the Parthian Empire, displayed his ambition and his superiority on the battlefield. Caesar, despite all of his achievements, was not universally admired by everyone. He was eventually put to death by a conspiracy of Roman senators in the year 44 BCE after facing opposition from fellow senators in the Roman Senate. His name, however, would go down in history as synonymous with power and authority, and his legacy would live on. Caesar's life and career have been the focus of several works of art, literature, and film. This demonstrates that Caesar's influence can still be felt in today's world, both in the works of Shakespeare, who showed him as a charismatic leader with a fatal defect, as well as in films such as Cleopatra, which chronicled his infatuation with the Egyptian queen. He has been immortalized in a way that will live on forever. Overall, Julius Caesar's influence and strength cannot be denied, and his legacy continues to shape how we comprehend ancient Rome and the role it played in the course of world history. Caesar was a very powerful man, and his rule was for the most part unopposed during his reign. However, during his period as dictator, he also acquired a large number of adversaries. Some senators despised Caesar's power and influence, and they feared that he was becoming too much like a king. They also believed that Caesar was becoming too much like a king. They were concerned that he would establish a monarchy in the Roman Republic, which would threaten the established power structures of the Republic. Caesar had rivals among the common people of Rome, in addition to his rivals among the senators. 
Some Romans disliked his changes and thought of him as a dictator who was trying to force his way on the populace. Julius Caesar continued to be a powerful and influential figure, despite the fact that he had a large number of adversaries. On the other hand, his adversaries were not happy to sit back and let him dominate without challenge. They started making plans to bring about his downfall. Gaius Cassius Longinus and Marcus Junius Brutus, both of whom had been Caesar's allies in the Senate at one point, took the helm as the leaders of the plot to overthrow Caesar. Marcus Junius Brutus, Gaius Cassius Longinus, and Decimus Junius Brutus Albinus were the leaders of the plot, which involved at least 60 to 70 senators. On the 15th of March, in the year 44 BC, the conspirators put their plot into effect. They awaited Caesar's arrival at the Senate before attempting to stab him with knives. Caesar put up a fight, but his opponents were too numerous and overwhelming for him to prevail. Plutarch claims that following the murder, Brutus moved forward as if to address his fellow senators, but they left the structure instead. Then, as they marched to the capital, Brutus and his allies shouted, People of Rome, we are once again free, to their beloved city. They encountered quiet because Rome's residents had barricaded themselves inside their homes as soon as word of what had happened started to spread. Before additional officials arrived to remove Caesar's body, it was about three hours before it was discovered where it had fallen on the Senate floor. The Roman Republic was thrown into complete anarchy with the death of Julius Caesar, which occurred on the steps of the Roman Senate. The conspirators harbored the delusional belief that assassinating Caesar would free the Republic from the grip of despotism. On the other hand, the result of their actions was the opposite. The murder of Caesar resulted in a power vacuum and a string of civil wars, all of which contributed to the collapse of the Roman Republic in the long run. The people who had plotted against Caesar were eventually tracked down and put to death in the years that followed. Caesar came to be regarded by many Romans as a hero and a martyr, and this perception persisted long after he had passed away. Therefore, why did Julius Caesar's adversaries attempt to kill him, and why were they successful in their attempt? Caesar was killed due to a combination of circumstances, all of which had a hand in bringing it about. To begin, Caesar's dominance had reached an unsettling level, which alarmed a great number of individuals. Because he had anointed himself dictator for life, he was making decisions without consulting either the Senate or the people. Some others argued that because he posed a threat to the Republic, it was necessary to limit the extent of his power. Second, throughout his reign as dictator, Caesar had accumulated a large number of adversaries. His dictatorial manner of governing had alienated many Romans, and some members of the Senate had taken exception to the reforms he had implemented. The people who plotted against Caesar recognized a chance to rid themselves of a formidable foe and to help the Republic regain its former splendor. Thirdly, the assassination of Caesar was not an act that occurred on the spur of the moment. The conspirators had spent a significant amount of time preparing the operation, and they had selected the time and the location of the assault with great deliberation. They were well prepared and well organized, and as a result, they were able to defeat Caesar's bodyguards and assassinate him. The final possibility is that Caesar was responsible for his own demise in some way. He was a man who exuded self-assurance and ambition, and he had already attained a significant deal of authority and success. On the other hand, he was also arrogant and disdained his rivals. It's possible that he misjudged the gravity of the danger posed by the conspirators, and as a result, he didn't take adequate safeguards to safeguard himself. The tragic and significant event that was the assassination of Julius Caesar in Roman history took place at the end of the day. It was the event that signaled the end of the Roman Republic and the beginning of the Roman Empire. Furthermore, it was the event that laid the groundwork for centuries of imperial authority. However, it was also a demonstration of the strength and influence of one of the most influential leaders in human history. Julius Caesar is still regarded as a towering figure in Western history, a man whose legacy has persisted for over 2,000 years, despite the opposition he faced and the shortcomings he possessed. I am grateful that you decided to accompany me on this journey into the life and death of Julius Caesar. I really hope that it was educational and enlightening for you. Remember to give a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, Farewell.